Welcome back, Careblazer, to another bonus video to help you and your loved one with dementia get through this coronavirus pandemic as smoothly and calmly as possible. In today's video, I want to talk about how you can talk to your loved one about the virus, especially if your loved one is accusing you of not visiting or even your loved one wanting to visit you and you not wanting them to visit given all of the concerns. I've been getting a lot of emails from Careblazers about this and especially from Diana. This one is for you. She reached out to me recently through DM on Instagram and her mom is constantly accusing her of abandoning her for no longer coming to the um, nursing home to visit. So if you are finding yourself in this position, no matter where your loved one lives, if they live somewhere outside of your home and they are accusing you of no longer wanting to visit them or they're really fearful and they don't understand, I hope this video helps. Number one, plan a little thinking time ahead of time before you pick up the phone to talk to your loved one. You know your loved one's probably gonna ask where you've been. You know your loved one's probably going to accuse you of not visiting, especially if they've already been doing it. So plan for that and take a moment or two to just prep yourself that you know this is going to happen and how do you wanna respond. Number two, instead of trying to constantly give them all the rational reasons about why you can't visit. You can certainly try that. You can say there's a really bad flu going around and doctors are recommending everybody stay in the house for a bit so that we don't spread it. Certainly try something like that and see how your loved one reacts. But I also really want to encourage you to just, again, respond to the emotion underneath their words. If they're accusing you of not visiting, no longer wanting to see them, just saying, come visit me anyway. If you really loved me, you would. Consider responding with statements such as, I really miss you too. I really wish I could come see you too. I can't wait for a couple weeks for us to get together again. You're not actually responding directly to their question or their statement, but you're addressing their underlying needs and you're letting them know, I miss you too. I love you too. I can't wait to see you either. I can't wait for this is all over. For now, it's important that we all stay as healthy as possible, right? And so when you, when you respond in those ways and make statements like that, your loved one, it's harder for your loved one to get argumentative or accusatory. It's still possible, but it's much less likely than you saying, I can't right now, the doctor doesn't want me to right now, because then they start worrying about you getting sick or all of these other fears and concerns. So when you hear them being upset, remind yourself they're really just upset because they miss you and they love you and you miss them and love them too. And you can just say, man, this is a really hard time. I wonder what we can do to get through this together. You know what I miss the most about visiting you? When we eat together or when we have a snack together. Maybe we can do that together over the phone or over FaceTime, right? Whatever level of ability your loved one has. If there is an activity that you used to do or you would do with your loved one when you visit, then try to bring that virtual. Try to bring that over the phone as much as possible. If you always tell your loved one a joke when you visit, have a joke ready. If you always share a cup of coffee with your loved one when you visit, say, hey, I just prepared myself a cup of coffee. I'm going to sit down. Why don't you get a cup of coffee and let's chat together. Let's have our morning cup of coffee together, right? So we can start to keep some of that normalcy even though you're separated. And it helps keep some of that connection even though it feels so separate. And then finding care, care blazer as much as possible, trying not to take too much offense at your loved one being upset that you're not visiting, knowing deep down and being confident that you're doing the best thing to keep your loved one safe. For many of you, even if you wanted to see your loved one and break all the rules, you couldn't because the facilities aren't letting you visit, right? So number one, prepare yourself ahead of time. Number two, respond to the emotion behind their words. Let them know you miss them, you love them, you can't wait to see them again. Maybe consider saying, hey, pull out your calendar and let's plan the next visit. And you guys can say, hey, how about Let's hope for the beginning of April that I can come see you. What do you want to do first, right? So it's just kind of getting something to look forward to, letting them know you miss them and you don't like the situation either, and then finding some sort of activity that you can do together. And maybe you check in a little bit more often. Sometimes careblazers might find themselves 
wanting to distance their from their loved ones even further because their loved one is in this state of anxiety and really wondering where you are. But it's okay to check in with them more frequently and say, hey, you've just been on my mind. I really miss you. Can't wait to see you again. Or hey, you've been on my mind. I just watched this show. Do you want to watch it with me? It comes on again in 30 minutes or something like that, right? Get really creative and try to engage your loved one as much as possible virtually. Care Blazer, this is a hard situation. I know you're doing the best that you can. Keep it up. I wish this was easier for everybody, but we are all going to get through this, and I hope that these tips can help you if you find yourself in this position. If you have any questions you want me to answer about the virus and dementia caregiving, leave them below this video. I'll do my best to answer them with another bonus tip. Sunday will be regularly scheduled programming with the video that was scheduled to go out as usual, um, but I really do want these tips to be as helpful to you as possible. Okay, hang in there, bye.